glavno jelo iz Koreje. Hyong Park je arhitekt, kustos i umjetnik. My name is Kyung Park, and I've been mostly uh, uh, traveling and living in ex-Yugoslavia at the moment, and uh, trying to work with different people in this region. I started as an architect, and then I became a curator, and then now I'm an artist, and uh, maybe I'll be something else tomorrow. <laughs> I think uh, in largely now we are living in a nomadic society uh, and uh, I try to understand the nature of that and uh, to, to understand it better that I myself become nomadic. I suppose that I chose myself to be nomadic, uh, feeling that I didn't really belong anywhere. Uh, and therefore that I could belong with those that who didn't feel they belonged anywhere either. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, started this journey uh, first uh, by going to Detroit from New York. Detroit is a, uh, in spite that it is within a developed uh, state economy, uh, that uh, the city of Detroit is very peripheral. Uh, it's uh, one of the great examples of uh, 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 what commonly called the shrinking cities. It suffered a great deal from deindustrialization uh, that began in the 70s, late 70s mostly. Uh, of course, the uh, de facto localization also followed that. And uh, so Detroit is a, a, a city that is most segregated in the United States. I used to call it uh, jokingly as Sarajevo or Detroit <clears throat> because, you know, I feel like if you really analyze it in, the most, in one way, that you could call it an ethnic cleansing by economic forces, you know? that, you know, racially defined at the end, is the uh, most economically deprived city, uh, large city in the United States. And you could even uh, suggest that the reason why uh, certain developed economies can sustain itself because it leaves certain cities, certain portion of population behind, uh, which in the United States it would be officially about 35%. I would have to say it's too early for me to say that I have any visions about uh, future cities. In this uh, process, that that it, we see it as a period of transition, a transition from a, a city that is largely was politically defined, going uh, becoming that is something more commercially defined. The ideologies will be now commercial multinational corporations, obviously, and the most uh, a lot of major buildings are being taken over by them. We hope that there is an alternative after uh, the demise of this uh, commercial entity identities. Uh, I think the society people will see in the end that uh, this transition would not bring the kind of uh, cities that they would like to have. Balkanization largely, I think, is a pretty effective uh, 
uh, theory against uh, multinational globalization. But what interests me the most is that in this period of balkanization, there is tremendous empowerment to uh, the people, in spite and maybe because of the difficult uh, economic uh, period uh, uh, that people encounter. Collapse of state and collapse of economy, hyperinflations in, let's say, like Serbia, for example. People had to reinvent themselves, uh, not ex expect to be reinvented by the state. And I think this self-reinvention, I think, is a really critical toolbox uh, for building of the future city. I realized that uh, this uh, aspect of uh, the positive balkanization is now uh, fading and losing ground, uh, uh, just simply because of the people's uh, desire to improve their quality of life, and, and that is being uh, offered uh, uh, by economic agendas, from particularly from the Western Europe. The lure of the EU that uh, all political parties, left to right, radicals to uh, liberals, uh, seems to all agree on this. Uh, and also, strangely, the populace sees uh, also EU as the best opportunity to denounce the political states of their own uh, uh, countries. This is a dilemma that we're facing now, and it's purely because there is no alternative to this. Uh, it's commonly known as EU is the only game in the town, right? I think my first uh, strongest opinion about Sarajevo was that, that it was really an uh, Islamic city. Yeah, and that after that realization, then I felt that it was the most, uh, maybe perhaps it's the most uh, the furthest uh, 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 Islamic city furthest into European territories. And then it gives the idea that cities do present itself as a uh, pictorial map of the, its inhabitants and the society in which that inhabitants live with, you know. The other aspect about Sarajevo is, unfortunately, the city has no direction at the moment. I think that comes from the, uh, the, the domination of the city affairs from uh, different uh, uh, external uh, NGOs and protectorate and fundings from the outside that make city very dependent to that and that it disallows uh, people's own ability to self-reconstruct, recreate the city, whether it returns back to the city what it was before or a different kind of city, you know, in the future, right? Remains to be seen. In some way, in strange, odd way, that the war uh, 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 that surrounded Sarajevo continues, this time not by the soldiers on the hills, but by uh, 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 international interest and programs and funds that now uh, is within the city itself, you know. Uh, I understand that intentions from outside is to do, it's, it's for good means, uh, but perhaps that that it needs to evolve beyond the notion of a paternalistic view uh, from, the, from Western Europe or uh, other states of more economic and political uh, 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 powers uh, uh, to, uh, to not to romanticize Sarajevo as something they wish to be and uh, as a multicultural state, for example and uh, funding that uh, and support reconstruction of that, perhaps, uh, for what cannot be achieved in their own state, you know. And therefore, uh, Sarajevo becomes victims of other people's agenda.